Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Diamond Aircraft makes first flight in its turboprop-powered DA-50 JP-7. Red Hawk Diesel selected for Cochise College Fleet. And Dar Sakata delivers 51 TBM 900s in 2014. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. Well, we're getting used to seeing some very advanced aircraft coming from the Diamond Aircraft Company, and it looks like they're at it again. A DA-50 powered by a turboprop engine made its first flight on Monday of this week. This concept was first introduced at the General Aviation Show, Aero Friedrichshafen, in April 2013. The single turboprop, with room for up to seven passengers, bears the name DA-50 JP-7. The airplane will be manufactured in two different versions. The Tundra variant, with big wheels and rugged landing gear, is perfect for uneven strips and rough terrain. The second version is targeting training and private customers requiring high performance. The 460 horsepower AI-450S turbine engine is built by Ukrainian company Motorsich JSC in collaboration with Evchenko Progress and has been newly designed especially for fixed-wing aircraft. It is particularly fuel efficient at medium altitudes and is controlled with a dual FADEX system. Certification is expected in the last half of 2016. Red Hawk Aero, a subsidiary of Redbird Flight Simulations, has announced that Cochise College in Douglas, Arizona has ordered six Red Hawk aircraft in a move to upgrade and modernize their training fleet. They will utilize the new Red Hawk aircraft while training for private pilot, instrument, and commercial pilot certification in Cochise College's professional pilot program. Belinda Burnett, Director of Aviation Programs and Chief Flight Instructor, said in part, quote, The selection of Red Hawk aircraft for a training fleet offers us flexibility and cost savings, end quote. Redbird began development on the Red Hawk project in 2012 with a goal of creating a standardized training aircraft that is affordable, operationally economical, and technologically advanced. The result is a remanufactured Cessna 172 equipped with a jet-burning FADAC-managed Continental engine and advanced avionics. After the break, Dar Sakata TBM 900s are rolling out the door. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS enabled integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. Dar Sakata delivered 51 new TBM 900s in 2014, representing a 27% increase from 2013 for the family of very fast turboprop aircraft. With an order intake for 64 aircraft in 2014, it was the best year ever in terms of TBM sales volume and the second best year for the company's aircraft program since 1990. About 78% of the TBM 900s purchased in 2014 were for customers in the U.S. and Canadian markets. While new business also came from other key aviation regions of the world, South America accounted for 10%, mostly in Brazil. Europe was next with 8% of the sales, and Asia Pacific represented the remaining 4%. The TBM 900 deliveries in 2014 bring total TBM series aircraft received by customers to 713 units, 
with this global fleet accumulating more than 1.2 million flight hours as of January 15th. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. We expect hundreds of associations to team with us in the Airborne Partnership Initiative, and we recently announced 10 organizations that have helped set things into motion. If we go down the list alphabetically, the first organization that comes into view is the Academy of Model Aeronautics, known to all of us as the AMA. The fact that the AMA shows up first is fortuitous, because this organization forms the very foundation of all organizations that have since been formed to promote and protect our endeavors in aviation and aerospace. Founded in 1936, the AMA is the official national body for model aviation in the United States. They represent more than 140,000 members that participate in modeling hobbies that range from hand-launched gliders to model rocketry to radio-controlled aircraft. The AMA sanctions more than 2,000 model competitions throughout the country each year. And their promotion of STEM-related education projects provides a guiding light for young Americans to see the opportunities provided in aviation and aerospace. We at ANN are proud to have the AMA as part of our Airborne Partnership Initiative team. After these messages, airport repairs canceled the Offit Air Show. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument, TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. Well, with so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. <music> Taxiway repairs put a crimp in the Defenders of Freedom Air Show at Offutt Air Force Base in Omaha, Nebraska. The $7 million repair job means that the air show will be canceled this year, but luckily it's on the calendar again for next year. An aviation analyst determined that certain models of Airbus airplanes have a bright future, but some models are considered to be dead aircraft in the marketplace. The analysis uses a complex criteria to determine who's in and who's out. Beware of hot UAVs. Thieves broke into a store selling UAVs in Westlake Village in Ventura County, California pilfering $50,000 in equipment. The price is too good to be true. It may be stolen equipment. A company called Skydio says it has developed an autopilot for UAVs equipped with cameras. Just point it at the spot on your smartphone and that's where the UAV will go. Maybe you can tell the FAA that it's the autopilot's fault. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. The spaceship company known as TSC, which is building the Spaceship 2 spacecraft for Virgin Galactic, made a decision to build a serial number two of the spacecraft early in 2012. The company recently introduced the second space liner to the public 
through a YouTube video posted on January 15th. The video shows that the spacecraft now looks like something recognizable. Jonathan Ritchie, program manager for Spaceship Two, said there is still a lot of work to be done. Among the next steps are to put the new Spaceship Two on its own wheels and paint the spacecraft. Later, systems will be powered up and checked, and the feather system will be tested in the hangar. As of now, no date has been set for the first flight. Well, that's our program for Thursday, January 22nd. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.